right here at the end of the hive tool. The second most frustrating thing in beekeeping from what people tell me is they can't find their queen. Oh, that can be so frustrating. But do you really have to find your queen every time you do an inspection? Absolutely not. Today, I wanna to give you tips on how to find your queen. I think it's gonna help you guys out. Hey everybody, David Burns, gonna be with you. So when you're inspecting a hive, do you need to find your queen every time? No, you certainly don't. You just need to find evidence that she's in there laying eggs. So you're gonna be looking for eggs, obviously, and a brood pattern to see if she's laying uh, very viable, you know, uh, fertilized eggs. And so those are the two things you're gonna be looking for. Good capped over brood, solid brood pattern, and of course the presence of eggs mean the queen's in good shape. If you spend too much time looking for the queen, you're gonna probably increase the chance that you might kill her accidentally by handling frames, or you know, something can just make the hive more irritable by you keeping it open longer. So don't feel like you gotta find your queen every time. But there are eight reasons why you do need to find your queen. Obviously, if you need to swap her out because maybe the colony is real defensive, I've got one of those this year. Oh, I'm hanging on to it, but I don't like it. And so if they survive the winter this year, I'm gonna swap the queen out next spring. Um, but anyway, swapping the queen out can be a reason. You might wanna get a queen that's much more, uh, her progeny is much more calm. And so you wanna trade her for a better queen. So you gotta find her so you can trade her for an upgrade. <laughs> And the second reason is sometimes when you make splits, you want to find your queen because like me, I make a spring split by taking four frames of brood and honey with the mother queen that overwintered away from the hive. That's my split so that the original hive no longer has a queen. They're down four brood uh, frames. They got to draw out more comb now. So they're not going to swarm. They don't have a queen and they got a lot of work to do. So I got to find the queen in a situation like that. Number three, sometimes it's a good idea to mark your queen. I mean, if you live in Africanized areas, um, you need to have a marked queen so you know you don't have an Afri Africanized queen. And uh, obviously when you mark a queen, it's going to be much easier to find her. So that's a third reason to find your queen. A fourth reason is you might want to make a little bee lab nuke. I do a lot of talk, speaking and talking around the country. And in most of my talks, I encourage people to have a little bee lab nucleus, a five frame nuke that you can play in your hive. You don't have to wrestle with 30 frames like two deeps and a medium super. You can just sit and play in this five frame nucleus as just an experimental get familiar with bees. This is really helpful for new beekeepers. And so when you're making up a five frame nucleus like that, um, you may want to carry that queen over, so you need to find her. Another thing you've heard me talk about is caging the queen in late summer, early fall for mite control. So you got to find her in order to cage her. Number six, you might want to put a queen excluder on in the summer to keep bees out of your honey supers. And so in order to put a queen excluder on, you want to make sure the queen is below into the brood area and not above up in your honey super. <laughs> so you need to find the queen before you put a queen excluder on to know which side of the fence she's on. Number seven is harvesting. I think a lot of beekeepers don't realize that when you're harvesting frames of honey, um, sometimes you're opening the hive up and you're really manipulating a lot of the hive, taking those honey supers off. And if you don't use queen excluders, your queen could be up in a honey super. So it's good to know that your queen is okay after you harvest your honey frames by putting eyes on her. So that's another reason to find her. And the final reason is when you do a mite test, an alcohol wash will kill your bees. And if your queen is in that bucket of alcohol, she's gonna be dead too. So anytime you do an alcohol wash to test for mites, you gotta know where your queen is. The first thing you need to know when you're wanting to find your queen is look for the correct frame. A lot of beekeepers, when they're brand new, they don't realize that there are only certain frames that you're gonna find your queen on. For example, you're not gonna find your queen on honey frames. Now, these things aren't always the case, never say never. But the queen isn't going to be on a frame with nectar, honey, or pollen because she's an egg-laying machine. She needs to lay eggs. To lay eggs, she needs to have a prepared cell uh, in the brood area to lay those eggs into. It's been prepared for her. So when she goes up into a honey super, if she does stray up there, she's going to turn around and go back into the brood area because she wants to lay eggs and she can't lay her eggs in a pool of nectar or honey or on top of pollen. I've seen it on pollen, but not very many. So just know you gotta pick the right frame. The right frame is gonna be usually the five middle frames in the brood area. That's where you're most likely to find your queen. So choose the right frame. Now, here's another tip. Choose a frame with eggs on it. When the queen lays an egg, 
for the first 24 hours, the egg is straight up in the cell. So if you pick up a frame and you see eggs on it, then you're gonna notice, oh look, there's an egg sticking straight up. That means the queen was here 24 hours ago. She's nearby, she's in the neighborhood. So anytime you wanna find your queen, it's easier to first locate a frame with eggs on it. Now start looking for your queen on that frame. I have a lot more tips coming up. Before I do though, Bobblehead David says, please subscribe. I had to put sunglasses on him or the camera focuses on him and I'm no longer in focus. <laughs> but uh, Bobblehead David says, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Now let's get back for more tips on finding your queen. Another way that's helpful to find your queen is that oftentimes a queen is surrounded by a retinue. A retinue is made up of, I don't know, three to four to 20 bees that are tending to the queen. They're taking care of her, feeding her, grooming her. Um, and so if you see a circle of bees, pretty likely that the queen is in the middle. Now, you don't always find a retinue though. Um, I'll often see my queens on a busy nectar flow day and the queens aren't surrounded by hardly any bees at all. She's just walking around laying and bees are just avoiding her getting out of her way. So uh, a retinue is not something you can always depend on. Now, I know a lot of you oftentimes leave comments on my video when you think you see the queen in one of my videos. I may be looking for a, my queen in, in a video here on YouTube and you might say, oh, 12 minutes and 41 seconds. I saw the queen, right hand corner, second bee to the left. And I'll look at that, it's a drone. So don't confuse drones for queens. This is especially the case if you're brand new to beekeeping because drones are larger. They have you know, big eyes, they have bulky bodies. They definitely look bigger. And so it's easy to think that's a queen. But the queens are more slender, they have a longer abdomen, and it makes their wings look shorter. And so in comparison, if you see uh, the three next to each other, then you can kind of see the differences. And, and you, once you get this in your mind, you know what to look for when you're looking for a queen. So don't confuse a queen with a male drone. Now, when you pick up a frame out of a hive and you're examining it to see if you can find the queen on it, always have the sun at your back. And remember the cells are around 12 to 14 degree angle. So you gotta position the frames just right so the sun shines down into the cell because you're looking for eggs. So once you see you have a frame of eggs, now you can scan the frame. Perhaps the queen is on this frame. Another tip that you're gonna have to really think about is depending on your age, but you're gonna have to depend on wearing the right uh, glasses. If you are farsighted, means you're better at seeing far away, not very good at seeing close up, near. near. Um, if you're farsighted, you probably need to get some reader glasses. Those of us that are over 40 years old and are farsighted, we don't see up close anymore. So we have to have reader glasses. Every time I go into a hive and I forget to wear my reader glasses, I get so frustrated and I'm like, oh, I forgot my glasses. As soon as I pull a frame up and start looking at the bees, I can't see. And so I have to pause and put my reading glasses on and start looking up closer. This isn't the case if you're nearsighted, you're better at seeing up close. So make sure you have the proper eyeglasses on so you can see up close because you need to see eggs and you need to look closely at your bees to distinguish a worker from a queen. So you got the sun behind your back, at your, you got the right eyeglasses on so you can see up close. And the next thing is you need to allow a gap when you're handling frames looking for the queen. Let me explain. So if you were looking at, like you pull the first frame closest to the wall up, you leave it out of the hive, now you've got a gap, right? A little over an inch there, and now you can slide frames. But if you pull two out and set them aside, you've got a pretty big gap. The gap is really key when you're looking for the queen because when you pick this frame up, and you check to see if the queen is on it, you don't see her, you put it back in the hive, you can slide it, you don't put it back against the next hive, or the next frame you're gonna look at, you wanna put it back against the wall. If you put it against the frame that you're about to take up and look at a new frame, then the queen may be on that new frame and she'll jump on the one you just looked at, and as soon as you slide it back, you'll spend all day looking at all the other frames and she was on the one you just looked at. The gap allows you to keep a distance from the frame that you verified the queen isn't on and put it back in the hive and not let her jump onto the frames you haven't looked at yet. So play with that gap, respect the gap, and make sure that the queen is not gonna jump frames on you. So let me share with you the best techniques that I use in finding my queen. Now I'm gonna select the frame that is most promising to have the queen on it, usually five frames in the middle. I'm gonna start looking at those. I make sure they have eggs on it, that way I know the queen is nearby. I'm gonna have the sun at my back so I can verify the eggs, and then here's the Kicker, here's the trick, here's the magic. What I do, is a technique that I learned a long time ago. I actually start looking at the frame right at the top middle. 
and I'm going to scan about an inch with my eyes all the way around the edges and see if I see the queen. I'm not looking for a bee with a crown on. I'm not, you know, the queen is just kind of sometimes looks like all the other bees, right? But she's a, she appears to be different most of the time. So I'm looking for the queen. I know what she looks like. I'll scan one inch. And then as I go around, now you can go clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't matter. I go clockwise. But when I get back to the top, I go down a little bit more with my eyes. So I'm gridding. I'm actually having a grid search pattern. And I just keep going in until it gets tighter in the middle. Why do I do that? Because sometimes, as you can see here, the queen can be on the very edge when you first pull the frame up. She's down in the crack, you can't really see her. Let's pick her up and put her back in the middle. I'll just set her right here and we'll let her walk around over there. And she'll be between the bottom wood and the comb. Uh, might be a little gap there. She'll be covered up with bees. You'll never notice her. So I like to scan the outside edges first because if I'm holding a frame, the queen kind of doesn't like the light. And so what she might do is go to the other side of the frame. So she may already be low. She may already be at the bottom and she may just slip to the other side. So if I scan the outer edges, I might see her and go, aha, look, she's going around the other side. But if I started in the middle and worked my way out, she may have already gone over there and I've wasted time. So that might be a real helpful technique for you. Some of the words that I use today may be a little confusing for you, especially if you're new to beekeeping or you're thinking about starting in the spring. I realize words like retinue, mite control, maybe there's words that are, you know, terminologies that beekeepers are familiar with, but till you get around the block a few times in beekeeping, you kind of scratch your head and you wonder, you know, what does that mean? What is a split? What does that even mean? Well, Sherry and I made a video helping you understand some of the misleading terminology in beekeeping, and that video will be helpful. Check it out right here. I'll see you guys over there.